Welcome, YouTube! I started a real loud. Sorry. Hey, I'm real sorry, guys. Um, day two of this, February. Great name, Ari. That's so smart. Isn't it awesome? It, I'm Ari, and it's Feb... Fe um, we're gonna play Beacon Pines again. I'm excited. Chat's excited, I assume. I don't know. They didn't tell me. I don't like talking to them, but we're gonna play. I'm excited. Um, dude... I sent a, a, a Instagram reel. To, I saw an Instagram reel uh, that was saying um, it, it, it was a it was Rocket League. Sorry, I'm so all over the place. I'm a little late to stream for you who were watching the VOD. I'm a little late. And also I was turning in an assignment on stream. So like I'm a little all over the place. But <laughs> I saw a reel that was Rocket League. Uh, and it was like this guy hitting some crazy shots in Rocket League. So, obviously, I sent it to our favorite Lo Rocket League player, uh, Ellie. And I just captioned it with, does this turn you on? And I was like, that's funny. That's great. And then he responded with, I hate Rocket League. <laughs> with a, I think it had a period at the end. And he's just like, I hate Rocket League. I was like, guys... I think Ellie just lost five ranked games in a row. <laughs> He's a bit angry. What do you mean? Is Xbox down? Wouldn't that be so funny if Xbox was down? Yo, Xbox status. Let's just check. All services are up and running. Try again. Come on, baby. My Wi-Fi is working because I'm streaming, so it's not me. There we go. It was just It just had a bad launch. That happens sometimes. I don't know. It just it, you just restart and it works. Meet back at the big creepy gate. If you guys don't remember where we left off, go and watch yesterday's vod. I don't know why are you here. I streamed yesterday. <laughs> it was yeah. It was just from it was. You could have watched the vod this morning. It came out this morning for everyone who's here live. Um. Anyway, uh, the big creepy gate. Is that? That's this way. I remember. Let's go meet back. What was the last thing we did? I don't remember. Anyway. Good morning, Jeff. <laughs> Did you hear that? Do you hear his voice? That's so awesome. Ah, oh, what's so good about it? Another day and further down the tubes, if you ask me. Come on now, it's not all bad. The festival's coming up. Mm, the festival. Old man Valentine used to put in cockamy shindigs all the time. And where did they get us? Well, it's perennial harvest putting on this one. And they're doing it for the whole town. As far as I can see, the difference between the old Valentine Company and this new perennial harvest outfit... Jeff dug through his pockets for a bit. ...is the difference between this empty soup can and this brown banana. But those are both garbage. Exactly. Do you guys like the Jeff voice I put on? I don't know if we've talked to him before, I'm gonna be honest. If we did, here's the thing. If you were here from yesterday's stream and you are showing up to this stream, none of the voices are gonna be the same. I'm sorry, that's just how it works with me. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about that, no matter how hard I try. Didn't mean to go in here. Can I go in the drugstore? Drugs for sale, drugs for sale. Let's go to the gate. Beck lives in this mansion, right? Isn't that what we learned yesterday? What's good, Beck? I pulled my headphones out. Uh, crap. I knew we gave her a, a real annoying voice, and I wanted to make it better this time. And I don't really remember exactly what it was. I'm also checking real quick to make sure that I didn't get any important text. Uh, I didn't. Did I? I didn't. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thanks. Um. How do you even do, like, voices? Uh, wasn't someone Scottish? What was the Scottish... <laughs> Here's also a thing. When I do accents, I'm like, is it racist? <laughs> is it bad if I do an accent? Because I don't know. I think I searched up classic Scottish phrases yesterday. <laughs> oh, yeah. Your arse is it doing that? <laughs> that was what I used last time. So who all lives in this house? In, the ha in, that, in that house? I think it'd say house, not house. Eris and Gus Valentine grew up here. And Solomon moved in a few years back. At creep... The... The creepy little... <laughs> I think I'm going British again. <laughs> I can't do it. Accents are so difficult, dude. Also, switching back and forth is so hard. Uh... 
Uh, what's up? I'm here for a quick important mission mis mi mission <laughs> message regarding February. This is not a real month. February rookie is the true month. As today is my birthday, so good night. <laughs> that is all. Yo, happy birthday, Strook. <laughs> Welcome. February rookie is insanely unfunny though. Try again. You can do it. You can do it. There's an R in there. Feb February. Feb. Wait, hang on. Feb. 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 Febu rookie. Mm, wait, February rookie is what you said. Never mind. There's no good way to do it. Um, but try harder next time. <laughs> that's the real main point of what, that's the gist of what I was trying to say. Anyway, a little, the creep little kid in the vest, the creep, <laughs> yeah, yeah, good one, Dragon Slayer, you, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Fabio Dragon Slayer 150, let's go. That sounds like the one. Oh, just three people living that each thing. I bet a bunch of... Shady stuff happens in all, all the time in a place like that. Not really. The Valentines pretty much keep to themselves. So it's empty and boring. Pretty much. Or oh, waste. My mom says that it, you. Wait, no. My mom. Uh, sorry. My mom used to say that it used to be way busier back before Sharper died. Now she's gone. She left me. <laughs> before the foul harvest. Alcoy, they select the fifth time someone mentioned this foul harvest thing. Are you you all use that same ominous tone? Eventually you're gonna explain to me how that harvest got fouled up. But we can't keep my parents waiting anymore. This way. This way! Alright, let's go. <laughs> Good night, Struck. Have a happy, happy birthday. <laughs> Most kids would dish me by this point. Uh, why are you still here? I also am not trying with the Scottish accent anymore. I think I just went with something else. This is the Beck accent. All right, not Quebec. The the Beck. Let's just get that straightened up real quick. You look like you could use some help. You know what, Luca? You're not so bad. Let's get through this as simply as possible. Just eight small and nod. Fun. Great. Whatever you do, don't bring up their work. I think I can handle Beck that. took a long breath, then gave a firm nod. Here goes nothing. It might be Australian. It might be. Chapter 4. But if in any Australians in the chat decide it's not Australian, then it's not. Then it's just Dinner Beck. Dinner with the Moodwills. Ilona Moodwill was worried New about chapter, change. let's go! A gardener at heart. She understood the necessity of change. Relied on it, even. But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. Almost done. Nellie was a blur of activity, digging through boxes. Sorry, love. Couldn't find the dishes. We'll have to make do with paper plates. Dinner went by without much conversation. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. Okay. The things she cared about were still here. That's such a dark thought to have at dinner. First of all, you okay, you're with your child and her new best friend who she forced to be her friend, who you just met today. And also, what a strange thought to have at dinner. I don't generally go and sit down at dinner and go, man, I'm glad my family's not dead. I just go, wow, this food is scrum diddly umptious. And that's, I move on. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. That okay. was beginning to take root. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. Oh, that's, that's sweet. I can admire that. She could do that. That was kind of a pretty little transition, wasn't it? Uh, I think they had normal voices. So, Luca, tell us a bit about yourself. Where do you live? Oh, I live with my grandma. Over on the other side of the lake. Uh, river. Again, completely didn't misread. Just said a wrong word. Your, your grandma? Where are your parents at? Beck Manners. It's alright. Wait. <laughs> it's alright. My dad passed away in an accident at the fertilizer plant six years back. Oh dear, my mom's been missing for a few months now. Like missing, missing. Lucas I like eyes how were fixed to his plate, Sorry. pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. I like how Beck's accent is like 
not an American accent, but her parents are. So I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> did you guys hear about the story? This is a, a very old story, by the way, but I saw it on the internet of like some parents who they had a daughter and they wanted the daughter to have a British accent. So they would talk in a British accent around her until she grew up to have one and they weren't British. They like there was no relation they were just like i want her to have it so they would just pretend to have one so she grew up with one and then it like it was just she just had it it was just hers nelly was the one who eventually broke the silence luca how how'd you like the pizza oh it was good very good normally we'd have put more effort into dinner nervously gestured toward the boxes we weren't fully settled in and beck had mentioned that's your favorite I'm sorry, are we just skipping the part where he said his mom was missing? Ah! Beck! I'm sorry, Luca, this move is us all a little tired. Luca wiped his face with his sleeve. That's so funny. I'm sorry I'm laughing at this kid's trauma, but it's real fucking funny when you think- When you really think about it, and when it really- <laughs> When you really get down to- Get down to business. It's pretty funny, that's all I'm saying. Why did I get so many emails? Does anyone use email? Truly, all it is is spam. No, it's fine. So Beck said that you moved here for work. Beck gave Luca a swift kick under the table. That's so funny. Didn't even process that he did that. Hilarious. Oh, I mean, what brought you to Beacon Pines? Oh, you were right the first time. We're here for work. Nelly won't tell you this, but she's a brilliant chemist. I don't know about brilliant, but I do love it. She's brilliant. Perennial Harvest just made her their newest lead researcher of deep engineering. Oh no, she's about to be evil because they are evil and weird and we got murdered by them twice last stream. She makes it sound more oppressive than it really is. I'm just happy that I get to make a difference in the world. Perennial Harvest is at the forefront of evolving agriculture and to something more useful than sprinkling water and excrement on the ground. Luca glanced over to back. She seemed to be holding her breath. What Nelly means, Luca, is that there are different ways to grow plants. Yes, yeah, some people talk to their plants and hope for the best, and some people happily leave their job to allow a loved one to pursue, pursue their dream. You swore! Beth you did it! Her fist into the table, perhaps harder than she intended. Oi, Luca! How about some zay? Actually, I actually have to meet my friend Rolo soon. Luca glanced outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. Looks like there's a storm brewing. I should get going. Oh, I didn't think there was any rain in the almanac. Yeah, almanacs aren't that useful around here. Luca wiped his mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Thank you all for the pizza. It really was good. See you at the festival, Beck. Gotta change my room light to purple. It's been decreed. Is that good? Got you. Is there a better purple? That, would, that looks more blue. This is purple. It doesn't change much with some of these colors. Like green, you can see pretty clear, but purple. I think purple's okay. What does blue look like in compare? Okay. All right, that's not bad. Cool. It's purple. Wait up! Oi, bruv. Oh, walkie home. <laughs> Surprised, Luca turned around. I gotta stop sniffling into the he mic. I don't even. I just do it out of instinct sometimes. I'm not on cocaine. I don't know why I do it. It's just something I do. Uh, but I've realized I would like. I rewatched VODs once and I just kept hearing the sniffle and it sounded like I was sick. And it's like, I'm not sick. I just do it. I don't know. But Beck seemed cool. Rolla would warm up to her eventually. Probably. Oh my god, we're finally gonna meet all three of them together! Also, is this our first time in chapter 4? Or is this like a second chapter 4? This might be a different one. I don't know. Uh, he presumed from the sky answered for him as a clouds also began to break! Right? That's good. We want them to break. The clouds break, and Luca that means that it's to respond, lighter. But the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break, revealing patches of star-filled summer night. There we go, baby. Moonlight filtered down, shimmering in the treetops. I'm realizing if it started to rumble, then maybe we would get the end of that path faster, but I want to see this. 
We can find the ends of paths later. We can always go back. If we want to. I could also move on and just 100% it off stream as well. Depends how tired I get of this game. But I'm enjoying it so far. Sure, you can meet Rolo. You're not going home? No, I promised Rolo I'd tell him about- Lucas stopped himself mid-sentence. Promise you tell him about what? Spit it out, bub. We're as thick as thieves now. If there's a juicy secret, you got to tell me. Okay. You can come to the treehouse and I'll tell you both what happened. Heck yeah. Let's go back in the house. What's good, moms? Okay. Anything over here? There's like a weird path here, but it doesn't take you anywhere. You just get Lucas to see a fucking fence. By the gate. That was a weird time to give me control, considering I couldn't do anything. Unless I missed something, but... Anyway. Gave me control for a split second, just so I could walk and lose it again. So you're telling me there's nothing mysterious or creepy about this place? It's mostly boring and empty. I refuse to believe that. Big sport gate. Lumen mansion. Rich reclusive owners. It even smells shady. Beck grabbed the wrought iron bars and shook the gate. Mark my words, you decadent, decadent, my, 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 ah! Mark my words, you decadent nightmare house. You will, you will reveal your secrets to me. Oh, okay. Well, that worked way better than expected. We're going to get murdered. See, we just did the same thing we did last time, where if we were still with Rolo, we'd be fine. We're about to get Beck killed, actually, is what's gonna happen. Because we can't die until everyone else dies, really. Anyway. What did you do? First of all, I told you so. Second, hide! Oh, okay. I thought we were gonna run in, actually. Oh my god, it's the hazmat, motherfucker. That's... That's Eris Valentine. Who's she talking to? I expect you to return that suit in working order. Of course. As long as everything proceeds as planned, there's nothing to worry about. The only thing I'm worried about is what's rightfully mine. If that means making some unsavory alliances, so be it. I couldn't agree more. There comes a time to suspend hostilities. I'll deal with our common threat. Now this is what I'm talking about. Dex's voice was an excited whisper. Proper shady stuff, bruv. Someone in a suit like that tried to grab me yesterday. Seriously? Shh. You do understand that when this all inevitably fails, I will deny everything. I wouldn't expect any less of you. You just worry about your part in this and let me handle the rest. I can't wait to see the look on that Rube Ka's face. Yes, the truth will come to light. I'm still surprised you're so comfortable with the potential collateral damage. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that change is painful. Wow, I was expecting shady, but that's just flat out super villain talk. If you don't mind me asking, why? Why are you doing all this? The mysterious figure retracted their mask, hair pushing out from all corners. Who want to make a gamble? Who do you think it is? I think it's the big titty diner lady. <laughs> no, she's already in with the drug crew, right? She's in with, with the two drug addicts. The grandma and the other one. The mom? Oh. <laughs> it's grandma. Right? That's like, grandma has a bunch of hair. Isn't that grandma? Shit. Family. A chill ran down Lucas' spine. His vision blurred. Beck stifled a sharp wince, and Luca looked down to see himself wrenching her hand. An answer I can certainly respect. That's Grandma! Grandma tussled her what hair back under the face mask. <laughs> Just remember, keep everything nice and normal until the festival. I don't need lessons in rousing suspicion. Gran gave Eris a curt nod and disappeared into the night. Lore! Wait, so she murdered me? Wait, <laughs> hang on. 
she killed her own. She said she's doing all this for family. She Chapter really fucking five. Walter Whited that shit. And then she murders me in the, like, second chapter when I go into that fucking factory? Interesting. What big ears you have. Interesting. Lucas sat shivering in the bushes, staring at his feet. Why do all these motherfuckers say, yeah, I'm doing this for family? Like, okay, Kendall Roy. Okay, Walter White. Shut up. Toxic men. And now it's, now it's an older woman. What is she doing? After checking to make sure the coast was clear... Beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater. The other option is that it's actually one of the, like, th there's three hazmat suits. It's not just one. So maybe she wasn't the one to murder me, but also, like, one of her friends did it? How are you friends with these people? Why would you let me get murdered like that? What the hell? Kind of crazy. Maybe I didn't get murdered, but it seemed like I did. It really seemed like I was going to, so. What's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. Why were you so scared of that old lady in the Azmat suit? That was my grand. That was your grand? Yeah. Y yeah. Okay, well. I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for all of this. Let's get back to the treehouse and figure things out there. Lead the way. Okay. Let me tell your moms. Yo, guys, you live like you li you. Did you see that shit? Okay, well they really don't want to talk to me. Is there any secrets here? Anything? Anything, Beth? Doesn't look like it. Rough. Rough, rough, rough. Arf, arf, arf. I'm not a fairy. I need you guys to chill with that. <laughs> I know that everything I do makes it seem like I am one. What is this? You look pretty. Yeah, I wonder what's over here. It won't let me check. Oh, shit. I gave this guy a voice that I actually enjoyed doing, and I don't remember what it was. For the last time, there's nothing to worry about. What's up, Javi? How you doing, bro? <laughs> of course, we're not worried. The clipboard finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Just dotting her eyes and crossing her T's. Well, maybe try minding your P's and Q's. Mr. Aren't P's and Q's arms cigarettes? Crossed Am I wrong? Ponch, gave an exhausted sigh. If there's anything you need knowing, you'll know it. Absolutely. If you'll just sign here acknowledging everything is accurate, we'll be out of your hair in a flash. Oh, for the love of... He snatched the pad and scribbled his name so hard the pen nearly snapped. He angry. He angry because he's not getting that grandma pussy. <laughs> There. And would you like my eternal soul as well? The clipboards looked at each other for a moment, almost pondering the possibility, then broke into laughter as they walked away. <laughs> How are you, dude? I'm good, I'm chillin'. I uh I'm streaming every day of February. It's gonna be fun. Hopefully I'll keep up with college somehow. It'll be interesting. Hey, what's up, man? Hi, hi, Mr. Nuttengreed. Luca, let me give you some advice. The next time someone you don't know asks to hear your thoughts, give them a good hard bop right in the kessa. Oh, Gran tells me to just keep away from the clipboards. That's good, that's good. Your Gran is a smart lady, Luca. Speaking of which, you better run along home now. Too dark out to be wandering on your own. I really thought he'd be like, speaking of which, how's she doing? <laughs> He, he's, he's real obsessed with my grandma, dude. Hey, is Bart over here? Ooh, I wonder what's up in here. Is it gonna... I just realized it might put me through the fucking cutscene again. Okay, it did. <laughs> I left immediately. I was not dealing with all that. A light's on. Do you guys see that? There's a light on up there. I don't know if there's any lore here. I'm just... I'm intrigued. This is a good game. What do you have to say about my situation? The answers you seek will be revealed to you in due time. The question is, the figure intoned, are you prepared to live with the truth? Okay. All right. Interesting. All right. Well, I think we should go then. After talking to these two. Another day, another dollar, another victory for the OG. See you tomorrow, Z. Have you noticed how all the perennial harvest folks order the same drink? Decaf cop cappuccino with extra foam. Why? I don't know. Just thought it's a bit odd. Pretty weird for sure. Well, the customer's always right. See you bright and early tomorrow. Can't wait. Okay, that was a useless conversation. 
We know that they're all the same person. <laughs> like we've been we've been you. Oh my god, he's not asleep outside anymore. What if he is dead? William Kerr and Gus Valentine proudly surveyed the half-covered festival banner. Cool, the evil villain and the other probably evil villain. They're probably all evil. Maybe all the adults are evil. Maybe it's gonna be teens versus adults. We're gonna really uh what's that show? We're gonna really stranger things this. Uh, even I don't think they versed them all. I don't know if they fight the adults in that one, but they definitely have like a thing of like, we're not gonna listen to you because we're adults and you're kids, idiot. I also haven't watched Best like season two, so. I've been watching The Bear. Sorry, I'm gonna stop getting distracted. I wanna talk about The Bear later. Love that show. I'm obsessed. I haven't finished the finale of season one yet, though. So, no spoilers. Um, It's all coming together quite nicely. <laughs> Couldn't have done it without you. The mayor gave a I love playing Kerr. Shrug. What a freak. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> Nonsense! That reminds me, I wasn't able to thank your sister for her contributions. Yes, she has been indisposed of late. She doesn't much like me, does she? Oh no, that's not it at all. She's just been busy. Of course! Regardless, I'd be forever grateful if you could pass my thanks on to her. The History Museum adds this real air of import to the whole affair. And we couldn't very well celebrate the story of Beacon Pines without including the Valentines! Uh, do you get it? <laughs> My father was a great man. You're darn tootin' he was! Kerr locked his arm on Gus's shoulder. He's such a fun character to just be a freak about. But I mean the entire Valentine family! And present company included! Can I ask you something, Mr. Kerr? Call me William! Ask away! William, why are you doing all of this? Gosh, I've never felt one needed a compelling reason to throw a party. Not just the festival, all of this. There's gotta be a hundred down on their luck towns out there. Why is Perennial Harvest so invested in helping Beacon Pines? You know what I love most about the agricultural business? Seeds. Seeds? Yep, little bundles of possibility. With a glimmer in his eye, Kerr gestured grandly toward the horizon. You treat a seed right, nurture it, feed it, and it can grow into something truly special. You see potential here. Undoubtedly! The seed of greatness is already under our feet. All it needs is a little nudge and the right leadership, of course. Oh. Good night, Mayor Valentine. So you guys weren't just gonna say hi to us or anything? We weren't hiding. You could've just been like, what's poppin' brand new whip just hopped in, but like there was nothing? Nothing to say? Nothing for me? All right, let's go. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, the treehouse is just a little further on from here. So what's your brother Rollo like? Rollo, he's, he's Rollo. Not particularly helpful. Sorry, I've just never thought about it. Lots of energy. He's funny even when he's trying not to be. Or he's not trying to be, other way around. Things have been tough for his family since the fowl harvest. It's about damn time you told me what this fowl harvesting is. It's a kind of a long story. Hit me with the highlights. Okay. There used to be a fertilizer company here called Valentine's. They were kind of a big deal. Ooh, big deal fertilizer. It was a big deal to us. Their, their stuff really worked. Farmers loved it. So Valentine's grew and grew. Beacon Pines pretty much grew around it. Most of them in town either worked for Sharper Valentine or used his fertilizer. Things were good. I'm sensing a big butt. I like big, sorry. Around six years ago, Sharper Valentine suddenly died. That's when my dad died. Oh my God, I'm a Valentine. That's not the lore. <laughs> There's no way. And something changed. Changed how? Could have been a bad batch. Maybe it was in the water or air or soil. Nobody knows. But all the crops died. And everyone blamed the Valentines. The foul harvest. Yeah. Fertilizers. Val Val Valentine's fertilizer went out of business. That was uh, him messing up, by the way. Half the town lost their jobs. Sheesh. The next year, the crops came back, but something was different. You plant a crop, do everything right, and it's sort of a crapshoot what happens. 
and no one knows why. No. I take it rules for him got the short end of the stick. Yeah, dude, really, honestly, Luca needs to learn how to talk. What a freak. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. Yeah, for some reason their farm was hit harder than ours. Others. That sucks. Things have gotten better since perennial harvest came to town. The Beacon Pines Reborn Initiative. Yep, yeah, first thing they did was give the town a deep scrub. They even put us up in hotels one town over for a week while they contaminated the groundwater. Hmm. We better get going. I think she was more going, hmm, and I went the other way. <laughs> because I thought it was going to keep going, but I guess we are just going to keep going. Anyway. What's up, Rolo? I missed you, brother. You were dead in my other life. Or, like, about to be. I don't know. You were locked in a cage or something. Which typically leads to, to death at some point. Then again, drinking water leads to death at some point, too. So, really, I'm just chatting shit, bruv. Just chatting bloody shite. Why is someone... Okay. Ignore that. Shut up. <laughs> Gonna bring stream to a grinding halt so I can check my phone. Phone <laughs> Anyway. It's about time. I was about to give up and go home. Who's the new kid? Name's Beck. You must be Rolo. Ooh. I see my reputation precedes me. Ooh. Welcome to Mission Control. Rolo waggled his head with pride. Not his tail. He has a tail. So, you know, you could have just gone with that. Ooh. Anyway. You'll find we spared no expense in construction. I've seen worse looking piles of junk. Ooh. Thanks. Ooh. Hey, Luca, you know the security concerns we talked about? Yeah? While I was waiting, I made some improvements. Let me lock this baby down for a little test infiltration. Can't be too safe these days. So this time when the freaks show up, that gun will work, right? And it'll murder them with bullets, right? Here's hoping. Okay. <laughs> Great. He's got a fucking old school taxi window. What is happening? He goes all out, doesn't he? Always lavish. Ooh, fancy. So what am I? What's? Hello? Ooh. There we go. And then we throw it at that. Okay. And then we uh, hit it this time. There we go. Oh my God! It's like a video game. Listen, I hit it somehow. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> I'm so good at this. Hang on. There we go. Love the Mets, baby! Let's go. I thought we were gonna see the gun, to be honest. Where'd you get all the where'd you guys get all this junk in the first place? There's a guy in town named Jeff who trades his junk for snacks. Junk food for junk. Nice. All right, let's go up. What's poppin'? So, pretty sweet security, right? It was, it was imaginative. <laughs> it was imaginative, I'll give you that. Luca, are we sure we can trust the new recruit? I'll, I'll vouch for her. Thanks, I guess. Oh, Luca, you promised to fill me in about the Valentine warehouse. Um. Luca sucked in a long breath. So, like I said, there was someone there. What were they doing? I don't know, but the place was lit up and active. Maybe there were squatters? I don't think so. It seemed more organized. When the man pulled me in, I saw some sort of equipment running. A man pulled you in? Yeah, but I, I got away. You keep saying it was men. They were wearing a mask, right? Yeah. Then it could have been a woman. How do you get away? How'd you get away? I grabbed a rock or something and broke their mask. They let go and I ran. Dang. That's intense. No wonder you freaked out when you saw your grandma. Yeah, that's the other part. On our way here, Beck and I saw Ares Valentine meeting with Gran, wearing the same sort of hazmat Roll suit. let out a low whistle. I can't do that. I'm gonna be honest, never learned how to whistle. And they weren't there for idle chit-chat. It was a proper clandestine meetup. 
So let me get this straight. There's an operation in full swing at the Valentine Warehouse. You were almost abducted by a strange man or woman. You could have just said person. In a protective suit. And then you saw your gran in the same suit talking to Eris Valentine. Pretty much. I'm beginning to think this town is kind of awesome. Lulu and Luca shot back a look. Elephants. Okay, Peppa Pig. <laughs> Don't call me that. Call me Bluey. I gotta play the Bluey video game. It looks actually like better than the Peppa Pig one. The Peppa Pig one was shit. Worst game I've ever played. Sorry, I'm getting texted, like, kind of important stuff. Anyway, and so we we can logically conclude <gasps> aliens or alien zombies have... This man is on the same thing at all times. And their leader is your grand and she tried to murder you. First of all, and for the last time, there's no aliens. Second, it could have been my grand at... It couldn't have been my grand at the warehouse. But I broke that person's mask to get away. The mask grand was wearing wasn't damaged. Smart. You're an intelligent little bitch, but what I will say is your grandma's still fucking evil. Anyway. But she's definitely hoarding spe- Damn, yo, Beck, get your shit together. But she's definitely hoarding something. Maybe. Your grin is weird, but she might be the most boring person in the universe. All she does is sit around all day making jam. With drugs in it. Let's make that clear. Drug jam. Uh, Jamex, Xanax? No. Uh, uh, J Jam Sid. No, that doesn't work either. <laughs> Jolly, <laughs> Jam and Molly. <laughs> anyway, what could she possibly have to hide? I don't know. We haven't talked much since she moved in. Moved in? Your grand isn't from here. No, she came a few months back to take care of me after Ooh. after his mom went missing. After his mom fucking left him. <laughs> I've made fun of this kid's like disappeared mom for so long. Is we're gonna find out that like she had a horrific accident or something and they covered it up or Or she'll survive. I don't know. We'll see, but like <laughs> it's gonna really bite me in the back when we find out her story. Did you know your grand before? Not really, no. It's been years since I've seen her. Six years to be exact. Luca, don't take this the wrong way. But are, you sh are we sure your grand is on the up and up? Luca gazed out the window. Beck has too positive of a voice for that to be like a scary thing. It's like, are we sure your fucking grandma's on the up and up, bruv? And everyone's like, oh, I don't know, tea and crumpets, mush, mush, mush. I'm just saying. It sounded like strange stuff has been happening since she showed up. We could say the same about your family. But you're right. Lucas, your grandma... What? Luca, your grandma is hiding something. And Pa always says, folks are willing to bury stuff worth digging up. We need to investigate your house. Uh. Nice. Not my best work, but I haven't eaten food in a bit, so I have nothing to burp. If my grand really is hiding something... Don't you think I would have noticed by now? Other than the fact that there's two rooms in my house that I physically can't enter and one of them is known as Grand's Closet and she doesn't want me in there because she wants uh, privacy? Um, anyway, that's kind of the whole point of hiding something. I guess you're right. Grand's been leaving the house for hours at a time this week. I'll call you two tomorrow when the coast is clear and we can start getting to the bottom of this. I'm always game for a good snoop. You can count on me. All right, fire. Chapter six. Chapter six. Called it. Secret layer. It wasn't that difficult of a call, but Summer I called forged it. Summer ahead, <laughs> but the nights only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. What, what uh what's his voice what time is it there we go it gets hard sometimes sometimes i forget my bad 
Okay. Where is my grandmama? Is she still alive? Probably. Oh my god, why is there so many texts? Is there anything important? Nope. Okay. Anything? Walkie talkie's not here. Noticing. Danger, danger. All right, here we go. Hello. Rollo, what on earth is that? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> That's a joke from Ellie's Discord that my chat probably will never get because we haven't done it here, I don't think. That ridiculous thing on your head. Oh, this? It helps me think. You're gonna need a lot more of those. Joke all you want. We'll see who's laughing when I crack this case wide, case wide open. The coast is clear? Yep, whatever she's been up to this week, it's been keeping her busy most of the day. Very well. The game is afoot. Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rolo strutted across the room. I swear to God, they're gonna like look through the entire house and then realize, oh wait, there's this locked room that's for Granny. If I were a Gran, where would I hide my deepest, darkest secret? So, uh, perhaps where you might least expect it. Rolo flung open the cabinet with confidence. He's gonna break all my shit. He Aha! Coughed as a veil of dust hit his face. The dust is cocaine! <laughs> I think it's safe to assume anything that dusty isn't what we're looking for. Or maybe that's what she wants you to think. Then again, any good detective knows not to trust their first hunch. First hunches are for suckers. This music's giving me succession vibes. Eureka! She's lit a fire in order to burn the evidence. She keeps that fire going every day, Rolo. Drat! It may already be too late. Just think of the mounds of documents lost to Ash. Okay. I'm gonna stop you right there. Can we just think for a moment? Luca, is there anywhere Gran doesn't want you to go? Yeah? The closet upstairs. So maybe it stands to reason that we should check that first? No dice, it's locked. Well, well, well. Look who stands to reason now. And I have no idea where the key is. If it really is important, then she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? She has her berry bushes. Who, who has ever thought I'm going to take this important thing and huck it in a bush? True. Anything else? Maybe something out of the ordinary? Well, she is always worried I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen. But it doesn't matter anyway. I can't reach the a latch. Look of realization crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. We're gonna break her fancy plates and there's gonna be nothing there. All right, Rolo, this is your time to shine. Ah, oh, yes, you've called upon my expert detective skills, as in his height. And now I shall proceed with- Before he could finish, Lucas scrambled up Rolo's back. <laughs> hey, this is my idea of detective work. Every squad needs a good lockpick and every good lockpick needs a sturdy head to sit on. This is beneath my standing. Stop complaining and still hold still. Got it. The three crowded around the hutch to peer in. That's just like Toy Story when they like open the lock. It might have been one of the shorts. I don't know if it was actually a movie. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. There's Their gonna be nothing eyes there. searched for anything amiss, but the only distinct feature was its impeccability. That's what I'm saying. Well, that's anticlimactic. Yeah. I don't really know what we were expecting. Like, oh, hey. Let me just yank on this random teacup and- pulled on one of the teacups. No fucking way. with a hollow click. The entire- What a joke! to rustle and slide under its own power. Have a good one, Lily. See you in a bit. Seems like your grand has been doing some remodeling. Dude, only two types of people have secret layers. Evil masterminds and superheroes. So, which one do we think she is? We're about to find out. A 
okay, so more of this. Wait, oh, okay. Okay, so more of an unhinged conspiracy vibe? Ooh. Conspiracist? Oh, wow. Yeah, this cannot be good. We need to look around before jumping to conclusions. Well, I'm gonna go for the obvious one, which is the fucking board. A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town, interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. Oh, she's insane. Well, she sure has kept herself busy. Uh, is your grand a serial killer? Because I'm starting to get a vibe. Don't be ridiculous. Sure, she's just tracking the movements of everyone in town out of the kindness of her heart. She put little symbols on them. By some of them. Yeah, Mr. Nuncrete has a check mark. The clipboards are all inside a big circle. My moms are both on here. Both with question marks. Gus Valentine has a question mark. Harris has a question mark that's been crossed out. Uh, Mr. K has a bullseye. The killer has chosen her next victim. We don't know what any of this- We don't know what any of this means. Whatever it means, it's probably not good. I gotta go, but before I do... 10 crunches. Fucking called it! Called it. I'm gonna pause you, YouTube. I'll be right back before- I, After I do these 10 crunches. Alright, here we go. Crunches are done. Let's do this. Luca Filing cabinet. Each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. He fingered through the filing cabinet, pausing- He did what?! The folder labeled. <laughs> Walter. Sorry. For a long moment, he just stared at it. Walter? We need to cook. <laughs> hey, yo. That's funny. I didn't fix my hair after doing those crunches. Is that okay? It's real hard to see myself now with my new setup. Honestly, it's hard to see me at all because of the lighting. Like, the hair doesn't even matter. It's just like a pitch black mess. I really got dyed again. What do you got there? It's my dad. Looks like some of his old medical files. Your dad was a doctor. Luca nodded and caressed the label with his thumb. Diet pink? Hot pink? I could maybe do that. The thing is, I know someone in one of my classes who has like full hot pink and I don't want to copy her because I'm not friends with her. And I feel like <laughs> I would feel awkward just being the two people with hot pink. Maybe highlights though. I mean, if I don't do full. All of um, Zen has been yelling at me to do purple for so so long, so you know, we'll see, we'll see. Well, are you gonna read it? I here, let me help. Rollo swiped the folder from the drawer and began leafing through the pages. He whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. How about you actually read some of it? One sec. Dense documents such as this are a lot like a cheeseburger. It's best to skip straight to the middle. What? That's where all the meaty bits live. Wow, I had no idea we were in the presence of the preem preeminent scholar in dense documents and cheeseburgers. By all means, proceed. He stopped at a page and mimed, holding up a monocle. Ah, oh, here we are. Follow-up examination of Terence Wilby. Patient shows further signs of paleness and malaise. Body temperature continues to drop. He now describes soreness of muscles and joints. This is similar to the ex symptoms exhibited by Mrs. Wilby just a few days past. Still waiting on lab results from Joseph. Rolo looked up with heightened surprise. See? Creepy. Yeah, that's kind of disturbing. Who's Joseph? That's Mr. Nuncreed's name. Wait. Rolo's finger traced across the page. There's more scribbled in the margins. Could it be contagious? Mr. S Wilby claims the tap water at his... Blah, blah. It said more questions, so then I thought there'd be more, and then there's only one, so then I, I got thrown off by that. Anyway, claims the tap water at his home has been contaminated. Perhaps environmental? Lab results only ra raise more questions. It's like he came back to this, make this report. He came back to this report later and made notes. So it might be related to something else. Follow scanned through several more pages. Here, the writing looks shaky. I just couldn't help her. This disease, or whatever it is, progresses so fast. And with his wife passing, Terence's condition falls close behind. Exasperated by the loss. Enough is enough. I need to take matters into my own hands. Luca, staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. What does this say next? Rolo rustled the folder, trying to loose more pages. That's where it ends. 
What? There has to be more. Luca frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Luca, I think that's the only one. It's alphabetical, see? What did he mean, enough is enough? How did he take matters into his own hands? This is bullshit! Luca slammed the drawer shut. Okay. You throw a bit of a temper tantrum there, mate. How about you chill out a little bit? What do we have here? Barrels marked caution explosive. And jam jars? There's enough jam to feed the whole town. What kind of incendiary jam is your grand making? Is this D&D? &D? <laughs> Ooh, new word. Hang on. I wonder how many paths we've just opened up. Like, with some of our new words. Okay, so we gotta go back to Rumble at some point. Gotta go back to Tickle. And the other words mean nothing! Cool! I wonder if any of these charms mean anything. Like, so I mean, sorry. I'm, I wonder if some of these charms mean anything. Because, look how many we have. And there's no way we're using all of these. I don't know. Anyway. She wouldn't have had me walk around town delivering bombs. Right? Only one way to find Lola out. casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. He's insane. Huckleberries? He smacked his lips. A hint of brown sugar? And... Ink? What? Rollo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Oh... Aha! Rollo offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. It's addressed to Mrs. Fratelli. A grand jam gram? It says last night I used a disguise Harris provided to scout the location. The timing window should be possible. Operation spark plug is a go. Oh man, are they doing a heist? Whatever it is, it can't be good. It's so more of a bomb shell than a bomb, am I right? <laughs> You're new here, so I'll let it slide. But I'm the bad joke guy around here. I'm the joker, baby! I'm the bad joke guy, baby! <laughs> Sorry. They crowded around a uh, there's just some bits that I just love. That, they just make me so happy. Cool, this looks like a treasure map. Not every old map is a treasure map, Rolo. Yeah, but every treasure map is an old map. Can't fault that logic. Look, there's even a pathway drawn on it. It starts at the entrance to town. And if we follow Rolo it... carefully traced the path with his finger. It leads right to... He jabbed down at the end point. Town Square? That's the fountain in the middle of town. What a weird place to hide treasure. Um... Rolo, that doesn't look like treasure to me. The end of the path on that map has the same symbol as the explosives over there. So, it's not hiding treasure. A real bummer. Rolo, what's the thing you've been excited about for the past month? The the festival. Gulp. Did you just say gulp? This feels like a gulp kind of situation. Everyone will be gathered near the center of town. She's gonna blow up the festival! No, if- not- sorry. Not if we stop her! Hang on. So... Here's what's really happening, because she's definitely not just going to murder everybody, right? There's a disease, and there's also two competing families now, because there's the Valentines, who had- who were like the old money, they had like the old shit, and then there's like the new perennial harvest motherfuckers, and the Valentines already said they're against Kerr and the perennial harvest motherfuckers, so... They might blow up the perennial harvest building, right? Because that's in the center of town too. That's by, like, all that stuff. Um, that feels like the play, right? Anyway, uh, what was that? Luca looked up from the map. What well, was what? No, I heard it too. That was the front door, which means someone just shut the door, which means someone's upstairs. Shh, quiet. Hit the lights. Beck flicked off the light, and they became statues in the dark. Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. 
The kids looked up, the tilt of their necks following each footfall. Then suddenly, it stopped. Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. That's not my grandma. Uh, hello? Uh, wait, wait, is, wait, this is the nerd, right? Look, he has glasses and he has like the little squirrel tail. What was his voice? He had a good one. I remember he had a good one. Hello? A final few footsteps. Oh no, he the lisp. Above That's them, right. And the voice now echoed down hello? the stairs. I, there's no lisp that I can do there. there. There's no lisp that I can do there, but hello? Uh, reach the entrance above them and the voice not okay. oh. And you went down there? The three kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. As he began to descend the stairs, the man's voice Thanks, punctuated Appreciate every it. new also, step. Hi. Thump. Oh. Yoo hoo! Thump. Oh. I'm not here to hurt anyone. Thump. Oh. Oh. I'm just here to help. Just thump. At the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. How do you know we're here? Oh. Huh. Oh, oh, oh. Guess it's nothing. Rolo shifted suddenly. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. Rolo, don't. It was too late. Rolo was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. Oh my god. Flaming chicken coop! With all his weight, Rolo tackled the man to the ground. He hit his head. He died. Rolo? Mis mysterious creepy man? Anyone there? From the dark corner, they saw something move. Welp, I didn't know if I had it in me. But there was only one way to find out. Holy crap, Rolo, that was awesome. Wait, did you just kill that person? Luca scrambled <laughs> to the hunched figure on he the hit his head and he died, I told you. Pressing his fingers to the man's neck, he sighed with relief. Damn. You sure clobbered him good, Rolo. He's knocked out As cold. As flicked back on the light, Luca and Rolo both gasped in stereo. <gasps> Fucking knew it already. Yeah, baby. Ooh, 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 ooh. What's up, Ellie? How you doing? That hurt my head, me doing that. <laughs> it means what's up, bitches. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver! I mean, I, I knew it Chapter already. Seven. I, I was aware. But, you know, whatever. I mean, it's, it's whatever. The interrogation of Shut Hiram up! Tolliver. <laughs> Did you guys hear that motorcycle? <laughs> Still unconscious, Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. His hands were bound with rope. His feet tied with some loose string. Kinky. The kids huddled in a circle. Never mind, sorry. <laughs> it immediately went to the kids, and I was like, never mind, back up, pause. One thing was certain. They couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. They needed to know what he was doing in Luca's house. After some deliberation, it was decided. <laughs> FBI open up. Classic good cop, chill cop. Yeah, baby, let's just chill out. They chill found out, a everybody. Good cop, chill cop interrogation. We're gonna be like that stoner that we talk to all the time. I'll handle this. Just gotta play it cool. Luca walked calmly to the light switch, flicking it off and on a few times. Mr. Tolliver shook his head, gathering oh. his wits. <laughs> Golly, I sure got my bell rung. He looked over to find Luca, who returned a calming grin. My hair is not fucking vibing with me today. I'm trying my best. I'm just gonna make it look like I'm bald. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Ideal. That sounds like <laughs> that sounds like yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> I know it's not what you said, but it's funny to me. Sorry, Mr. Oliver, Tolliver. That's not your name. This was all a big mistake. Luca, what's going on here? Why do you have me strapped down? 
No one's fault, really. Rollo just got a little startled. Uh -huh. Rollo's here. Rollo and Beck emerged from hiding to give a timid wave. Well, all right. Mistake happen. I'm gonna spit so much trying to do his voice. You kids give all here him a good scare. Let's just get me out of these ropes and call it even. Luca glanced over to Rollo and Beck, who replied with skeptical looks. Mr. Tolliver, why are you in my grand's basement? Are you trying to fuck my grandma too? What the hell, man? <laughs> I don't get it. Why is everyone trying to fuck my grandma? <laughs> <laughs> I love this game. I'm here to help, of course. Help with what? What's my grand up to? If you want to cut me loose, I can show you. How do I know we can trust you? Mr. Tolliver exhaled with disappointment. Gotta love those gilfs. Luca, have I ever done wrong by you? No? And since your grand moved to town, haven't I been nothing but welcoming? Yeah? Why, so why would I turn my back on your family now? It's just... All this stuff seems pretty weird. A board with names of people from town? An archive of my dad's old disturbing patient notes? Luca gestured to the corner. Barrels of explosives? I can explain everything. You just need your untie me. You kids deserve an explanation. Luca looked again to Rollo and Beck. This time they shrugged. Luca began to slowly loosen the bindings. Fuck it! Mr. Tolliver gently rubbed his wrists. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver gently rubbed his wrist and then pulled out his Glock. <laughs> no witnesses. <laughs> That's a good lad. This will all make sense in time. He's backing up. He edged imperceptibly toward the stairs as he spoke. You see, this town is secrets, Luca. A very dark past indeed. Before the kids had even noticed his movement, Mr. Tolliver was at the light switch. You fucking bitch. A past that must be brought he to- He punctuated his final words by flicking the switch and rushing up the stairs. Light! Son of a- Beck darted to the wall and turned back on the lights. It was too late. Rollo confirmed what they all heard. He just locked us down here. Mr. Tolliver's muffled Shit. voice came from behind the door. I wasn't lying, you know. This is for your own good. You kids just keep tight down there and let the adults handle this. They looked bewildered at each other. Play it cool, huh? Wait, what was- uh, ball of war, play cola. Not now, Beck. Chapter 8. They heard the staccato Never mind. of quick steps exiting the house. The kids looked down in resignation. This Damn. isn't how it goes in Hank Atomic. Damn. For some reason, they'd always assumed it was up to them to save their town. Luca opened his mouth hoping to conjure some magical words to make this right. Only a hollow croak escaped. The end. Another- Fuck me. Well, we certainly aren't going to find a grand resolution to our tale locked in a basement. Back to the drawing board. Son of a bitch! Uh, okay, so we got- Okay, we did all those. Okay, so we can go, um- Let's just start here, because we were we were just doing this earlier this stream. It feels good to finish this off first. The clouds began to rumble. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to rumble with ominous thunder. Bloody brilliant. You sure we can make it home before the storm kicks off? Luca surveyed the roiling clouds. I'd say the odds are pretty good. Maybe you should stay here and I'll just make a break for At it. At that moment, the heavens opened up, unleashing torrential oh, rain. Oh, okay. I thought it meant they split again, and I was like, okay, why'd you even give me a choice then? <laughs> what the fuck? But no, it was... it was fine. Anyway. Care to recalculate those odds? Hurry inside, you two, before you catch a cold. 
This is so cute. Luca, Nelly will keep trying to reach your grand on the phone. In the meantime, you two hold tight. So where is this kid's sibling? Because you have a bunk bed. Why do you have a bunk bed? Sorry, not much to do up here. Most of my stuff is still in the boxes. Mind if I poke around? Be my guest? That's a weird question to ask. And also, that's a weird response. I'd say no. I'd say fuck off. I don't want you to see my furry porn. Luca that's a joke. Into the eye hole Calm down. Microscope. Chill out. Please. This looks wild. What is it? Gum. Gum? Luca adjusted the slide with his fingers to get a better look. I'm tracking the, int the structural integrity of gum with increasing amounts of chewing. Chewed that one for 47 Luca days. Luca his hand off on his sweater and gave a nervous laugh. <laughs> it's weird, I know. Beck looked down, timidly tapping the ladder with her feet. You think it's weird, don't you? A little. But weird can be cool. Oh, wow. Roll and I have a radio just like this at the treehouse. Probably not exactly like that one. My mom and I tore the whole thing down to the bolts. Filled it, fitted it with some state-of-the-art vacuum tubes. She's pretty awesome. She gets carried away sometimes. I think she feels guilty for working too much. So when she does have time for me, she showers me with high-tech compensation. And when I have time, I trauma dump on some kid that I met today. I bet you can get all sorts of stations on this. Note out here in the boonies. You wouldn't believe the stuff I could pick up back in the city. But around here, it's all farm reports and static. Aw, oh, shucks. Luca bent down to examine the bouquet of wilting flowers. Judging by the odor, they were well past their prime. Pungent, new word. He flipped open the attached We're card. learning, guys. Today's word of the day is pungent. What does it mean? I don't fucking know. <laughs> no, I know what it means. It's like a smell thing. Anyway. I'm just wondering, do we unlock anything? Nope. Some of these words, I really don't know how they're going to come into play. Like, I don't know what they're going to do for me. Um, I don't know if they're just there to, like, fill space. Maybe, like, for an achievement to collect every charm, and it's like you have to go through every path to get them and do everything. Anyway. Um, happy trails from Coach Walker and all the Fairview Condors. Boy, you weren't kidding about poking around, huh? Oh, sorry, was this from your old school? The most recent one, yeah. Some schools gave me going away cards, some did flowers. When they're really trying to feel good about themselves, they do both. So you've moved a lot. Yeah, that's the thing about having a brilliant parent. There's always a better job somewhere else. These flowers would last longer if you put them in some water. That's the sort of thing I would do if I cared. Well, you cared enough to keep them, is all. Luca, can I ask you something? Of course. Don't... <laughs> Dang, didn't that hurt? I'll be honest, that hurt more than I expected. <laughs> well, at least you look cool doing it. Beck took a moment to watch the rivulets of water running down the window. Damn, she really wanted to show off like that. Okay, damn, we're getting real to the trauma. Hey, why don't you ask that to someone who doesn't, like, who isn't an orphan right now, you know? I'm just saying, like, maybe this is the wrong person to ask if they feel alone. Anyway. Do you ever feel alone? Like, even when people are around? Well, Rolo can be pretty absent-minded sometimes. I'm serious. Does it ever feel like your family doesn't care what you want? Um, it didn't used to feel that way. Now they really don't care what I want, because they're both fucking dead. I know Gran loves me, but sometimes when she looks at me, it's like she's looking at a problem. Luca took a deep breath, exhaling slowly. I know the feeling. How do you feel with that? How do you deal with that? Well, me personally, I trauma dump on someone who just showed up, like, <laughs> to my town. <laughs> who has no idea what the landscape's like, but they're gonna know all about my personal problems. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love this game. I really do. I'm making fun of it because I can, but I really do love the I'm having fun. I guess I haven't yet. But one thing my dad told me when I was little, don't hold a grudge, especially against yourself. And I remember that because it's the only thing he said to me before he passed away. <laughs> if you try to hold it in, all in, you're gonna pop. That's what she said. So then what do you do when you don't know what to do? 
Dad never got to that part. <laughs> he keeled over right then. <laughs> That's why I remember it so well. Oh my gosh. Something I've figured out on my own though. You gotta do something. Anything. Here. What are you doing? I don't know. Something. We're gonna register our complaints with the storm. Listen here, you miserable miserable universe. Stop jerking me around and start jerking. Never mind. I just want things to go back to the way they were. There's some things that can just stay in the inside voice. Everyone tells me it's gonna be alright. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna open the window so we can jump out. <laughs> Everyone tells me it's gonna be all right. That things are gonna change. Let out a feral scream that echoed into the night. He does realize that the the moms can hear what's happening. Every time something changes, everything gets worse. Screw this town. Whoa. Let me try. Moving sucks! Damn, screaming in a British or whatever accent I'm doing is difficult. Oh, I hate it! Oh, I hate that I hate it! Why can't I just deal with it and be happy for my mom? Why can't we just stay somewhere? Her voice dropped to a trembling whisper. I just want to be a normal Beck kid. Beck brushed off her shirt and straightened up. There. Wow, I actually feel a lot better. A little better. Began, Not a lot. Storm I got a little overzealous there, bruv. Sorry. Sorry about that, Beck. Thanks. Don't thanks. Thanks. I needed that. It's a small town, but somehow you get accents from everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Listen, they all come down. They all just show up from also, um, Beck's parents don't have it. Only Beck has it. Don't know what that's about, but I'm not gonna question it. Me too. I should head out before the rain starts up again. Sure, I'll walk you out. La dee da dee da! See you and Rollo at the festival. Sounds good. Luca, don't let the universe joke you around. Beck gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in. I keep that time, I genuinely almost said jerk you off, and I, I wasn't even trying. <laughs> Love that diversity reminds me of there's there's only one fucking female Loki out of all the multiverses. Fuck you. That's not woman empowerment. That's fucking gender fluid erasure, okay? You can make woman also, how are you gonna do woman empowerment but write it how you write it, Marvel? You don't write it well at all. Ah, You still make the men the most powerful and interesting characters with all the fleshed out story beats. I watched a Bollywood movie called Fighter. Uh, it was mid. It was all right. A lot of Indian pride, which was fun. But th th there was this one woman character who her whole thing was that her dad didn't want her to be a part of the Air Force. So then her dad kind of abandoned her and was like, you're not my child anymore because you joined the Air Force. And like... Her whole thing is like, woman empowerment, yeah, women can be part of the Air Force too. But her whole story was just being the love interest. She didn't actually have any genuine story. And Marvel does the exact same thing. Go fuck yourself! <laughs> Beck gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in. Chapter 5. <laughs> That's funny. Friendly feud. The air was heavy with a hard rain's residue. We've had a lot of different chapters, and the I don't know where we're going from here. Things. Despite his dreary surroundings, Luca felt at peace. He'd never shared those details about his dad with anyone, not even Rollo. But it's not like this changed anything. Rollo was still his best friend. Adding Beck to the group would help balance things out. Everything's better in threes. True. This is what Luca told himself as he headed to the treehouse. Everything's better in threes, guys. Business transactions, you know, make it more complicated. Why have just one on one? Why don't you add like the another company? Just cause, you know, um, prom dances, right? Yeah. Why do the do the da 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 da, da when you could do the da 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 da? da you know, like you get what I mean. Um, 
<laughs> he went with the three testicles. Yo, RE three balls. Let's go. You've heard of RE two balls, but have you heard of RE three balls? Um, three eyes would be kind of fire. I agree with that. You know, I wouldn't mind one right on the forehead. It would make my forehead seem smaller. That'd be cool. Um, uh, I don't really need three ears. Three arms could be cool. You know, I already have three legs, basically, or at least people think I do. So you know, that's that's cool too. Um. Anyway. Let's go to the treehouse. La -dee -da -dee -da. Hey, hey Gates, open up. Hey, what's up? Why are you just standing here? Oh fuck, it's Dawn. Oh no. Hey Dawn, tracking down a lead? Three buttholes, but only three butt cheeks would be very inconvenient. Well, you only have one butthole, so you couldn't do two, but you would have two butt cheeks. You could have three, but then you'd have two buttholes, which then you would need a third butthole to compensate because everything's better in threes. So then you would have four butt cheeks. Anyway, that's horrible thought. I don't like it. Three boobs? That was in Star Trek. I remember that. Never watched Star Trek. I do know about the three titty alien, though. Peculiar how? Like what? They did say <laughs> Tebus could be fired. It could. They did say that one kid that one kid, what's his name? The little Sebastian bitch, whatever his name is. I don't know. That kid, um, I know it starts with an S, I just don't know what the name was. Um, the mom said you're a valentine now, not you're a valentine. So that's interesting. That's interesting. Solomon, told you to start with an S. Solomon's such an old person name. Solomon. So, Eris was forced to take care of him. Why would Sharper t care so much about some random kid? That explains the way Eris treats him. Poor Solomon. How'd you find all this out? Two is more than enough. Trust me, they're entirely inconvenient. Well, not if you want to milk. Not if you want milk, I guess. That's what they're made for. Um, then, then they have convenience. Like if you're in the middle of a desert, pretty convenient. Any questions, guys? You want to hear? You want to hear what the non-tittied person has to say about tits? Here you go. <laughs> Who needs cow milk when you can have three boobs? Exactly, dude. Re three boobs. Let's go. Let's go. Anyway. <laughs> Excuse me. What are you doing? Just locking up for the night, sir. <laughs> Wonderful. And two friends? Ugh! How are you gonna feed yourself? Let me ask some of my friends. You know what? Maybe I shouldn't just randomly text some of my friends who are girls and say, Do you think three boobs are better than two? <laughs> I don't know, man. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I just really need some fucking stretch in me. Yeah, this is truly all speculation. It's like... It's like... It's like nothing special. Some of my friends are in Discord and I feel a little left out. <laughs> I can only assume this means all festival preparations have been completed ahead of schedule. Um, not exactly, sir. The storm set us back a bit, and it's getting late, so we all decided to... You all decided? Yes, sir. I was unaware that your job involved deciding things. We're all here at Perennial Harvest because we believe in creating a better future. Yes? Yes, sir. Very much, sir. Do you want to be the one to tell this town that we failed them? No. 
we gave up because there was a little rainstorm and we all got sleepy. Of course not, sir. Good. Then it's decided. Yes, sir. We'll work till the task is done. See that you do. Our harvest awaits. I actually don't know what boobs are. <laughs> That's great. Rolo, are you still up there? We caused Rolo's death again. Fuck. I'm sorry. Rolo isn't accepting visitors at the moment. Come back, never. Luca had only ever heard him speak in this stiff yet gentle tone a few times. Oh, okay. He's just pissed. I thought he was like dead. I thought that one of the fox guys got and him. It always meant one thing. You're upset. Oh, what makes you say that? Maybe because my best friend abandoned me for no reason? I didn't abandon you. I'm just a little Lolo late. Lolo scoffed. <sighs> the rain held me up. Liar! You weren't even home. What? The storm got bad and I got worried, so I went looking for you. Imagine my surprise when I made it to your house and you weren't even there. I hadn't made it back yet. I'm not a fool, Luca. It doesn't take all day to deliver some jam. No, I... That storm rolled in out of nowhere, and I got stuck after dinner at Beck's house. Lucas stumbled on his words, knowing he'd said too much. Kill him? Jesus. Beck? Dinner? What the heck is a Beck? She's a new kid in town. She's actually kind of cool. You'd like her. She needed help convincing her parents that she made new friends. New friends? I spent all day waiting for you, and you were off making new friends? It's not like that, Rolo. You know, damn, Rolo's a fucking <laughs> jealous girlfriend type. <laughs> like the fucking, uh, the fucking, what's her, the psycho girlfriend from like 2006. Sorry, I really made such an old reference for no reason. I could have gone with something more current, I'm sure. No, it's like, it's like the, the fucking, I got it. I got the modern version. It's like the TikTok thing where people are like, Act like you were you were a jealous girlfriend, and it's like, um... <laughs> you haven't responded to my texts in two minutes. Do you hate me? Be honest. Stuff like that. While I was waiting, I made some upgrades to Mission Control. It was gonna be a surprise, but you took so long, the storm knocked it all down. I don't think that's my fault. I think you didn't put enough effort into making that stuff solid. Because if your security system broke down from a storm, I don't know, man. Just like you knocked down our friendship. What does that mean? Luca became instinctively angry in response. Both boys were now shouting across the distance. You guys are going to make me shout, please. Please don't do this. My throat's so dead already. Oh, fuck me. It means you're a bad friend. You don't care about me. Of course I care, you ass! I knew I'd get in trouble waiting so late for you, but I kept my word, and that's what friends do. Oh wow, what a normal sacrifice you made. Uh. Easy for you to say. Your grand doesn't even care. You can stay out as long as you want, and you wouldn't even get in trouble, because she doesn't love you. Seriously? You're acting like I chose this? If that's what you think, then maybe you're the bad Rose friend. Tone changed to a calm yet more intense anger. <laughs> maybe Pa is right. Storms bring more than water. This one brought out the real Luca. Stop quoting your Pa's nonsense like it means anything. Yeah, well, he's dead, jackass. What is wrong with you? Yeah, well, at least my pa is still around. Birds hung in the cold night air. Yeah, get fucked, Luca. Your dad's dead. <laughs> get, get fucked. What is happening? Willow's stomach dropped, knowing he'd crossed a line. Oh, really? Bro, you did you, you crossed the line, huh? But it was too late. Luca, I... Good night, Rolo. Dang it. <laughs> what a 
<laughs> Dumbass. Hey, your dad's dead. Hey, what fucking sucks to suck. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? If Rolo thinks I'm still going to the festival with him, he can shove it. Okay, well, what am I going to do then? What am I doing here? Unless I... I'm, it's possible I'm stuck and I have to go to a new storyline. Nope, there's something. Luca dug through his old stuff, not even sure what he was looking for. It's not Animal Crossing. I can't sleep on the bed to save. Oh, there's a soccer ball. Rolo, what a jerk. I assume there's nothing else. Yeah, there's nothing else. Oh, wait, I totally can't sleep in the bed. <laughs> I guess I'm just never supposed to make new friends. A weep. I can't repay my debt. <laughs> Luca? Grand cooed gently from the What's hallway. What's poppin', Crow? Welcome! You late as fuck, my boy. <laughs> you slept straight through breakfast. Luca, are you alright? I'm fine. Just don't feel like getting up yet. Okay, I'll leave this oatmeal by the door. I've gotta run out and take care of some things. Okay. You didn't get my notification? It was such a good one. <laughs> the notification was, Okay, I pull up. How about at the after party? Do you know that song? Sorry. L guys, loud is funny. I'll be back later to check in. Sure. Luca just wanted to be alone. He waited to hear the sound of the front door closing. <laughs> I do know that song. Let's go! Poggers in the chat. I bet Rolo is still going to go to the festival. Hmph. <laughs> He's going to be miserable. There we go. <laughs> My mom is not in the other room. My parents went to Brooklyn. <laughs> if Rolo thinks I'm still going to a festival with him, he can shove it. Alright. Well, guess I'm not leaving my room. What else I got? Nothing? Is he not allowed to go to a festival? Oh, he doesn't want to. Brooklyn is not India. I know. It's crazy. They went another place. All right, back to sleep. Luca dozed off again. Luca's in his depression hole right now. Luca, I see you didn't eat your oatmeal. Wasn't hungry. Well, just in case you get hungry, I'll leave a sandwich here too. Thanks. Rolo came by. What did he say? He wanted to talk to you. What did you say? I told him you weren't feeling well. What happened? I guess you gotta watch the VOD tomorrow. So, should have been here. <laughs> uh, we've gone through a couple different stories, so I actually don't even know where to start. I also don't know where we ended yesterday. So your plan is to just sit in your room all day? Pretty much. Well, I need to pop away again for a minute. If you decide to end your pity party and go outside, I think you'd do you some good. Noted. Luca still couldn't bring himself to go out. Besides, if he ran into Rolo, he'd have to actually confront the situation. There's never anything interesting at the festival anyway. Ooh. I'll try my best. Listen, I don't play football, alright? Ellie, I said that for you, don't worry. I got you. <laughs> I got you, baby. Oh, the dang! Yo, I landed that perfectly atomic. up there. Look at that shit. The complete first volume. Luca carefully opened the cover and began to read. The situation is, uh, it's what it was. It's what it was. We're trying to figure out what the story is, basically. But, uh, Rolo said some pretty fucked up shit to us last night, so we haven't wanted to see him. Also, it's possible they're gonna bomb the fucking f festival, so maybe it's a good thing I don't go. <laughs> maybe the whole town dies and I, I don't, you know? Rolo had received it for his birthday. A special hardcover edition with behind the scenes commentary and bonus art. Fucking nerd! Rolo cherished it, but asked that Luca keep it at his house. In French, we say something like, Those who are absent are always wrong. Is that, is that a thing? If you're absent from something, you're wrong? Damn. Me when I don't show up to my own funeral? Luca wasn't sure if it was because Rolo didn't trust himself with it, didn't trust his sister around it, or just wanted an excuse to come hang out at Luca's more often. 
Whatever the reason, Luca didn't mind. But it had stayed right there where Rolo had stashed it ever since. Now, at the foot of his bed, Luca lost himself in the pages. He'd read it all before, but at this moment, it somehow felt sentimental. Yo, Beatrix, shout out for taking me he was well into issue number five away from him to he talk heard for a soft bit. footsteps from the hallway. Appreciate you. Luca? Another little friend came to see you. A girl named Beck Modwell. Beck Modwell. Beck Modwell. It just sounds like a name that'd be like Mike Cunt. Or Mike Hunt or something. Like, I, I feel like there's like a, a thing there, you know? Beck Mo, Beck Modwell. Beck. Well, now I gotta do 10 crunches. Fuck. I'm gonna pause YouTube. I'll be right back. Welcome back, YouTube. I did my crunches. We're at 30. We're at 30 for the stream. That's pretty good. <sighs> she said you met yesterday? What did she say? Is she here? She was just dropping by. I told her you weren't taking visitors today. Oh. She seems nice. Yeah. You had a fight with Rolo, didn't you? Can I come in? Maybe later. Alright then. I'll leave dinner on the kitchen table. In case you want a bite before Without bedtime. Without realizing it, Luca had pouted away the entire afternoon. This is kind of... This is kind of like... This is... This is a little sweet, but it's also like, like grandma taking care of, uh, Luca. But it's also kind of sad. Like the, it's just like a straight up, uh, depiction of of depression, like not eating and sleeping the entire day away. Damn. He once again felt the weight of it all and allowed his weary eyes to close. Luca stood in a vast black expanse. He looked up at his father standing not your beside cock. him. Walt was working a straw at the bottom of a fountain glass, trying to collect the last bits of milkshake. Dad? Where are we? Taking a final loud gurgling sip, his father peered up from the glass. He jangled the straw playfully with a warm smile, then lifted the empty glass as if to point into the darkness. The source? Luca's eyes followed his father's gesture. In an instant, he was sitting in front of a blazing campfire. Across from him sat a large figure Just in a yellow hazmat suit. The figure's voice was a scratching <laughs> echo. Sorry. Well, if it isn't the man of the hour, make yourself comfortable. Luca held his shivering hands over the flame to warm himself. It doesn't work that way here. Their yellow-gloved hand pointed to the base of the flame. It's a cold flame. Luca peered at the base of the fire. It wasn't wood that was burning. It was Beacon Pines itself. Tiny buildings freezing and crumbling as they were consumed by flame. Oh shit. Luca could see small shadows moving in the burning city. People. Luca leapt to his feet. We've got to help them. The figure gave a dismissive wave of their hand. Why waste energy helping people who can't even help themselves? The figure bent down to examine the panicked crowd as they desperately tried to stop the flames. They only care about what's right in front of them, not like us. Luca's voice was a trembling whisper. Us? The figure slowly stood up grabbing its helmet with both hands. With a jolt and a twist, the suit emitted a gasp. A cloud of torpid mist escaped, slowly revealing the face within. Grandma. See, I know. You know why I know? I'm smart as fuck. own face looked back at oh. him. Oh. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, I know who you are. No, I didn't. No, no, no. Older, worn, distant. The sensation was I just punched Mike, oddly sorry. familiar, as if he'd caught his own reflection by surprise in the mirror. The doppelganger smiled. I tried to help once. My alarm's going off. I didn't do my Duolingo today, shit! He gestured towards his face. And all it got me was this. Lucas staggered back. You aren't me. Luca felt a hand catch his shoulder. His father was there again, beside him. Every choice sets us on a path. This is the end of one of your paths, son. Luca watched his older self shake its head ruefully, its face twisting into a cruel grin. Welp, Dad. If you wanted him to see this, far be it from me to disappoint. Luca watched in shock as the figure took a confident step forward and plunged into the flames in a flash of cold light. He was gone. What does all of this mean? 
Luca felt a reassuring squeeze on his shoulder. Just remember why we choose matters just as much as what we choose. Bro, you're speaking poetry at me. I don't know what you're saying. see figure at the foot of his bed, silhouetted in the morning sun. Mom? No, dear. It's only Gran. Aww. Oh, it's okay, Grandma. Thanks for being here anyway. Luca I think I actually got the sniffles now. My room's kind of cold. The kind, concerned face of his Gran came into focus. How are you feeling? Fine. Anything you want to talk about? I don't feel like talking. Are you sorry about suspecting her now? No, I'm not, because you should have been here for earlier in the stream and you would know why I suspected her. Motherfucker. <laughs> That's just as well. How about you sit there and listen a bit? Whatever you and Rolla thought about doesn't matter. Buddy? Grand silenced Luca with a gentle pat on the leg. Fights between friends happen. What was said doesn't matter. What matters is that he's dead. The important thing is, that's not the last thing you ever say to each other. Oh! <laughs> oh I kind of got close, didn't I? But he said stuff about dad. Well, do you think he meant it? No. He was just mad. Mm -hmm. And did you mean any of the things you said to him? No. Good. One must appreciate friends in their best moments and accept them in their worst. I do a lot of accepting with Ellie. Now get your little butt out of bed. The festival's today. You don't want to miss that, do you? I guess not. Seems like a good opportunity to make amends with Rolo, doesn't Luca it? gave a reluctant nod. Why does she want me to go there? So buy him a corn dog and apologize. But he's the one that. What did I just say? Buy him a corn dog. That's a good boy. Everything's better with corn dogs. I need to get going now. Get some last minute festival business to take care of. I'll come find you at the fountain a little after lunch. All right. I love you, Luca. Love you too. Luca took a deep breath. <sighs> okay. End chapter of chapter. Six. You're dead. <laughs> Just cause. Through thick and thin. Despite Luca's bitterness, T -T -T. Gran Trouble was right. Down. He needed to hash things out with Rolo. You know, I'm gonna take a pause real quick. YouTube, give me just a second. All right, here we go. A big fight changes the nature of a friendship. Whether, in the end, it is for the better or for the worse, all comes down to understanding. You thought it was blue? I Don't talk to me. <laughs> good night. Good night, girl. I know what magenta is. If one is not careful, the same familiarity that builds the strongest of bonds can become the wrecking ball that shatters them. Okay. Luca emerged from seclusion, taking in the crisp festival air. But the events of the day weren't on his mind. He had to find Rolo. I gotta make things right. What if he's at my dad's grave? What if he feels bad about the insane shit he said? Okay. This is a very peaceful little scene. Oh, I think I like this little life. Alright, let's go. Sneeze. Sneeze, bitch. Do it. <laughs> Come on. What do you mean? Why can't I sneeze? Oh, I built an intolerance. Or a tolerance. I didn't build an intolerance. Oh. There you are. Luca. Rolo wanted me to tell you something. What is it? Roxy rolled her eyes, shaking her head. <sighs> a space adventure, though you needn't buy it. If you be brave, go somewhere quiet. Uh, Roxy, I don't... It's a riddle, Luca. My goofy little brother wants you to find him. Luca looked down and kicked at the dirt. Look, I know you two had a fight. The only thing more annoying than my little brother is my little brother without his best friend. So I'm doing him this one favor. Now I need one favor from you. Whatever it is that went down between you, squash it. Go somewhere quiet. Library. I got you, baby. I know what you're saying to me. I'm smart as fuck, boy. I'm not even gonna talk to these fools, mostly because I don't feel like remembering their voices. 
And also because I know exactly where this bitch is. Yeah, look at that. The library. Somewhere quiet. Well, thanks. I figured that out myself. You didn't have to put an indicator on it. Uh, but whatever, that's fine. I guess. Kato's eyes lit I remember excitement. what his voice was. Don't you worry, baby. I got you. I've been expecting you. Bravo on deciphering the first riddle. You, the first? <laughs> That's what I said, Luca. <laughs> oh, you didn't think that was all, did you? Rolo does go all out, doesn't he? Kato straightened up and cleared his throat as if preparing to sing. <laughs> on planet Varpal, you may take issue. When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. Kato stared at Luca eagerly. Get it? Want me to tell you? No, it's okay. Let me figure it out. All right. When you find it, bring it here to be verified. And if you decide you want a hint, the offer still stands. Planet Farple, you may take issue. Fifth issue? Issue, if you, if, what? When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. Didn't they say something about my room having the fifth issue? I can tell you one thing, it's not out there. What you need to find is inside this library somewhere. Okay. Didn't they say all of the stuff was up here? All of the additions of Luca something? Grabbed the Adventures of Hank and Called it. Issue. Once you've got the book, you can either bring it here to me, or just grab a different one. Luca grabbed the ad Okay, well, I need the Luca fifth grabbed one. The adv ah, you found Kato it! Kato removed his book from the desk and replaced it with Luca's, turning on the lamp. As he slid the book under the purple light, two words glowed. Wait, you so you massacred a book for this? The Adventures of Hank Atomic, Issue 5. Okay, 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 okay. Luca clicked his tongue with recognition. Rolo's cipher pen. He used to write secret messages everywhere with that. And only I had the special flashlight needed to reveal it. But I lost it. Well, apparently he traded Jeff for this purple light bulb. Parted with his entire Halloween candy stash. Oh, Rolo. Now let's see here. Kato began flipping through the let's pages. Let's see here. <laughs> stopping when he hit a glowing word. Get away with such a grift. He continued flipping. Only found in grub cart. Reaching the end of the book, Kato looked up. That's it. Grift in grub cart. Griffin Griffin. Griffin's grub cart. He wants me to go to Griffin's snack stand. Oh, brilliant! I guess you're off then. Good luck on the rest of the scavenger hunt. Thanks, Kato. Imagine if he did all that and I just didn't leave my room. I just said, you know, fuck off. Hey, who the hell is Griffin, by the way? I'm gonna assume it's somewhere back here. That looks like perennial harvest. I doubt I want to go there. Maybe over here? Are you Griffin? What's your name? <laughs> Fucking got him. Let's go. What else? I mean, where else was it supposed to go? But, you know. Hey, Griffin. Did Rolo Before come? Before Luca could finish did his Rolo sentence, did... Griffin did handed Ro him a corn dog. Did Rolo do what now? <laughs> If you're gonna stop the sentence at did Rolo come, I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> anyway. Oh, that's it. Bought and paid for. Enjoy. I thought there was supposed to be a riddle or something. Luca shrugged, taking a sizable bite out of the corn dog. Yuck. It's cold. Oh yeah, that's been sitting here a while. Rolo wanted me to shoot. To be sure, you to give you that one specifically. Well, that's just. Luca tongued at his cheeks, feeling something rough between his teeth. He reached into his mouth paper. and pulled out a slip of paper. Yep. Oh come on! He shook off the bits of corn dog to read the slip. A pickup when you need some pep. Near the fountain, up the step. Luca finished off the remainder of the corn dog. Ah, <sighs> this is getting to be a whole thing. So that's going to be through here and right through here. Hey guys. 
There you are, Luca. Now hey, way I'm actually doing this. It's way below my pre-grade. Oh, come on, you big stiff. Let the kids have some fun. Fine. Borello owes me one. Mimi waved his hands around sarcastically as he began. What takes Floyd but has no wings? Yo, final task of friendship bings. Yeah, can you say that in like a accent I understand, please? <laughs> that wasn't so hard. <gasps> hard! We stay hard! Ugh, I feel cheapened somehow. I think it's sweet. What could this be? Flight but no wings. What takes flight that has no wings? A friendship brings love? Love takes flight, right? Your love can take flight and a friendship brings love, right? That seems pretty smart for me. I don't know where the fuck that would take me though, but I think that's the answer. Oh. Oh. Balloons! Hey. Hey. Did you find the comic book? Yep. And you got the corn dog? Yeah. Well then. I know it doesn't make up for what I said, but here, you've earned this. Lolo sheepishly handed Luca the balloons. Flight! Hang on. There's gonna be a flight or fight one here, isn't there? Where it at? Where it at? I know it's here somewhere. Oh, hard is up there. We just unlocked hard. Get hard. There it is. Flight. Fight or flight. This, I feel like this is going to be the path that leads somewhere. Because fight or flight are so iconic things. So I have a feeling that's the path that's going to actually take us somewhere. So we can go to Tickle and do all the other stuff first if we want. Thanks. You didn't have to go to all this trouble. I'm sorry I got so bad. Dang it, you were supposed to let me apologize first. Oh, sorry. Now you've apologized twice to me. Now, let me do this. Luca, I'm really sorry. With everything that's happened, with your mom and all, I've always wanted to be there for you. Be a good friend, you know? When you said you were hanging out with someone else, I kind of freaked out. Rolo, still my turn. I felt like if you needed some new friend to help you, it meant that I wasn't good enough. But that was selfish and wrong. Aren't these kids 12? They're, they have a really good perception of the world and their emotions. I was wrong. I'm so sorry, Luca. Okay, apology Ooh. over. You can talk now. Luca threw himself at Rollo, hugging him as tightly as he could. W. Rollo, I don't deserve you. I don't deserve you either. That's why we deserve each other. So, what else do you want to do today? We can snoop around and try to find some info about your mom. Snoop where? Snoop dog. We could probably sneak into Perennial Harvest HQ while everyone's at the festival. Aren't you curious about all the stuff those clipboards write down? What if we get caught? I think I've had enough excitement for one week. Let's just make the rest of the day about us. Really? Yeah, the rest of the world can wait one more day. It's something bad's gonna happen. You know, I have been wanting to get some work done on the MCDC on Mission Control. The aim is a bit unpredictable. That sounds perfect. All right, perfect. Let's do it. Yeah, while they fuck around and don't deal with the problems in their society, something bad is about to happen. Let's go, baby. Oh, I almost forgot. I ran into your grand this morning. She asked me to give you this. Handed Luca an unopened letter. I'll wait for you inside if you want to read it now. A letter? Luca. Some things are going to happen that might be difficult for you to understand. There it is. There's a supervillain speech. I did this for you, my kid, even though I just murdered your entire family. And your friends, and your civilization. If I am honest, I hardly understand that myself. Then why are you doing it? But whatever happens, I need you to know that I love you. Why are you doing it, though? None of this is fair to you. You have already lost so much. Then why are you doing it? Have. I wish there was a simpler way forward. But if there is, I haven't thought of it. Maybe think harder. God knows I've tried. 
we thought that the fucking sun revolved around us, and then we thought harder, and then we realized it didn't. Maybe think harder. Everything That's all I'm saying. I've done. I did for you. I hope someday you can accept that. Love, Gran. I love you too, Gran. Luca folded the paper into his pocket and headed up the ladder. That didn't worry you at all. You were just gonna fucking move on from that, huh? Hey, man, everyone's probably dead when you go back down. What's up with the letter? Anything you want to talk about? Maybe later. Sure, whenever you want. You know, you really didn't have to go to all that trouble to, just to apologize. I know, but we'd been looking forward to the festival for weeks. After I ruined everything with my big mouth, this was the best way to make sure you still had a good time without me. Rolo Luka was at a loss for words, but that was fine. Words aren't always necessary. The festival seemed nice. Was it nice? We can still go. No, nah, this is fine. Well, there's always next year. Sadly, this was untrue. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's true, dog. <laughs> a distant rumble shook the treehouse. Huh? What was that? Oh man, we missed the fireworks? It was not fireworks. It was something the boys couldn't possibly comprehend. Something as old and cruel as time itself. A nuke. What the fuck? Holy shit, the White Walkers came. A shockwave of cold tore through the room. A bitter, unfathomable chill. <laughs> the Night King won in this universe, dude. Before they could react, it encased them in ice. Two boys, reunited by friendship, only to be cruelly separated by a malevolence beyond reason. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene. What the fuck? In a silent treehouse turned statuary. In a town brought low by its secrets, sits a pair of friends, alone, together. For the rest of time. The end. Hello? No, that can't be the ending. It simply can't. I won't accept it, and I hope you won't either. Achievement. There are more endings, more possibilities. I, I can feel it. We are just going to have to sort through them all until we find the one that fits. <laughs> Bro? What are you talking about? Let's interrogate this guy, but go horde. Let's go horde. I want to get this left path done if we can. Um, I don't know if we can. Maybe it'll just keep going. But I have like 30 minutes left before I end. I'm hoping this one's kind of short and then we can be done there. Let's go with hard. They'd run the classic good cop, hard cop interrogation. We stay hard up in here. That was so crazy. I can't believe we just got iced out. Polo brandished a steely gaze. Fucking big freeze, dude. This. Read about it a hundred times. Big freeze is coming for us all, dude. What the heck? Rollo swaggered past the chair which propped up the slumping Hiram Tolliver. Without even looking at his captive, he began with a long, blustery drawl. Well, well, well. Mr. Tolliver. Mr. Tolliver remained motionless. Rollo spun around to face him. He'd clearly expected to rouse Mr. Tolliver with his booming voice. Mr. Tolliver? Beck and Luca gave each other an unsure glance. He's fucking Rollo dead. Rollo slammed his fist on the table. I said, Mr. Tolliver! He grabbed the table lamp and beamed it onto the unconscious face. Mr. Tolliver groaned and slowly lifted his head. He recoiled with a muddled, weary squint. What in the world? The chair wobbled as he attempted to straighten up. Who? Who's there? Mr. Tolliver could only make out rough shapes through the glaring light. With a gruff tone, Rollo hoped to both conceal his voice and intimidate. I'll be asking the question here, punk. Now hold on, let's just calm down. Oh, I am calm. Calm as a carrot in dirt. My alarm's going off again. That's for the Duolingo that I did. Oops. Got it, we're good. As for you, looks like you're sweating. The doubtful expression on Beck and Lucas' faces transformed into awe. 
We can do this my way, or... Well, let's just say, I've never needed another way. Lolo, hitting his stride, was now channeling every detective trope his memory could recall. He slammed the table again. Now dance! No, 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 no. What? I don't even... Mr. Tolliver's voice became desperate. He was nearly in tears. You've tied me down, how on earth could I dance? Dance with your mouth, punk! Spill the beans! What are you doing poking around this house? I, I'm here to help Juniper! To make sure everything's ready! Oh, so you're in cahoots with Gran? Gran? Mr. Tolliver was in a daze, now more confused than ever. Gonna help her blow up the festival, huh? Blow up the festival? Good lord! He shook his head, feeling more and more dizzy. No, no, you've got it all wrong! Where is she now? She's headed to the source. Source? Wait, fuck. Source? <laughs> What's the source? It's where- His voice faded to a whisper. The sound began. Where it all began. Holy shit, the Big Bang? Here? In Beacon Pines? What is Operation Sparkplug? With that, Mr. Tolliver passed out cold. You bitch. Rolo swung around with a repentant grimace. Uh, oh, damn, Rolo. Trigger word. I always you do one phrase and then got it. I think you went a little too hot on him. What did he say about the source? It's where the town began? We need more information. Yeah, but we'd better not push Mr. Tolliver any further. Is there anyone else who might know something? What about the history museum? It just got set up for the festival. Nah, that town was put up by the Valentines. Everything they do is just a bunch of fluff to glorify themselves. Is there any anything more reliable? The library! If there's any information about the source thing, Kato can help us find it. Let's go get some answers. Oh, baby, baby. What's up, Kato? This is a damn nice library. Oh, oh, thanks. We work hard on it. <laughs> Aren't you a little adorable to be a librarian? Aw. Oh, uh. Kato hung out here so much, they eventually just gave him a set of keys. I keep an eye on the place for Miss Novak sometimes. They got you working for free? It's quiet and I get access to all the books I can read. What more could a person want? Fair enough. What can I do for you all? We need a favor. I already told you and Rolo, I can't put you on any higher any higher on the wait list for the next Hank Atomic. And if you're here for more candy, I'll have you know I can't be bought. Call it a personal code of conscience. Actually, we're trying to do some more research. Now you're speaking my language. What are you looking for? That's the thing, we don't really, we sort of don't know. What do you got on the history of the town? Hmm, there's the county record archives. What's in those? Birds, deaths, newspaper clippings, stuff like that. Pretty boring reading, but they do go all the way back to when the town was founded. Great, we'll start there. My throat is dying. It's Chapter 8. <laughs> Holy shit, we're making Six our progress. Feet under, three towns over. The kids spent the rest of the afternoon combing through dusty piles of old county records, desperately searching for anything that could help them make sense of Mr. Tolliver's cryptic utterance. Puka tried to shake the thought of Gran's basement, but his focus wavered. Explosives, messages hidden in jam, dossiers on various town figures, and a corkboard threaded with photos. Gran was the only family he had left. He still couldn't bring himself to believe the worst. But the old map with the symbol of explosives in Town Square made that difficult. As the sun began to set, the kids were no closer to the truth. If I have to read any more records, my eyeballs are gonna pop. We have to keep digging. If I dig another word, I'm gonna end up in one of those asinine death records. Rolo Cotter lived a full and wonderful life till he read so much boring crud that his brain oozed out of his ears. Rolo shut his book with an assertive nod. If you got a better idea, spit it out. You sound like my sister. Keep pushing your luck, pal. And it won't be boring county records that kill you. I'll put you in the obituaries myself. Rolo muttered under his breath. Your county record. Really? That's the best you got? 
When I'm done with you, you'll you'll be the footnote in history. Just like Beck slammed her finger down on the open page before glancing down to read. Jay Hartford here. I love wait. Oh wait, fuck. I love to see you try. Hey, hey, hey. We're all a little tired here. Let's just take a minute and something tickled the back of Luca's mind. Wait, what was that name, Beck? In the obit? Oh fuck, I did the wrong voice. In the obit, Jay Hartford. From the book Brookville Tribune, eight years ago. That can't be right. Well, what is it? Jay Hartford? That's my grand's name. Juniper Hartford. Maybe there were two Jay Hartfords? Mrs. Hartford is survived by her young daughter, E. Hartford. My mom's name is Eleanor. Okay, this is getting creepy. Holy shit, guys. Lore? If your grand is six feet under, three towns over, then who am I living with? The question hung in the air. Dun, dun, dun. All right, gang, I got to close up for the night. Beck rubbed her eyes. How late is it? Oh, most ten. Oh, crap. Pa's going to kill me. I got to go. Yeah, my parents will be worried sick. Okay, let's meet up as early as we can at the festival tomorrow. What are you going to do with the un unconscious man in your basement? I'll think of something. Bro. Bro. His heart was pounding as he approached the house. Who is he living with? She's either a zombie or that's not the same woman. If he was lucky, Gran or whoever it was hadn't gotten back yet. But Gran like cares about him. Like she sent a letter to be like, I love you, you know, whatever. What is what? And of course, there was Mr. Tolliver tied up and unconscious in the basement. Dealing with him would be the first order of business. Luca shook out his arms to calm his nerves before entering. But why would she? He held perfectly Holy still, shit. tempering his breath. That was creepy. And closely. That was creepy. She was asleep. His only hope was that she hadn't found Mr. Tolliver before dozing off. All right, let's go check on him. Hey, Grandma! Hey, Grandma! Hey, Grandma! Hey, hey, Apple! <laughs> hey, Apple! <laughs> Yeah, let's go check on this little freak. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Mr. Tolliver was nowhere to be seen. Maybe he woke up, escaped from his bindings, and left without a trace? Or maybe Gran knew everything. What do I do? Luca's hungry stomach groaned. Not realizing it, he'd gone the entire day without eating. Okay, I can figure this out. Just need a little brain food. Luca rushed over to the pile of jam jars, unscrewed one, and shoveled a handful into his mouth. Oh no. I'm afraid your jam delivery will be delayed. He flipped the lid to read the label. Mr. Nuncreed? <laughs> okay, now I can think. So if Grand knows we tied up Mr. Tolliver, I'm screwed. If she doesn't know, then I need to play it cool. I guess the only option is to go to bed and act as if nothing's wrong. Grand will think Mr. Tolliver finished what he was sent to do and left when he was done. But I drank some of the jam. I wonder what that's going to mean for me. Is that going to kill me? Is that going to freeze me? Oh! Grand? Okay, stick to the plan. Go to bed and play cool. As Luca climbed the final stair, the emotion of the day dragged heavily on him. With each consecutive step, his legs weakened. His stride began to falter. Oh shit. He tried to grab for the railing to steady himself. Something was wrong. Come on, legs. Just a few more steps. Luca groaned and tried to move. His limbs might as well have been bolted to the ground. Through numb lips, he mumbled just before falling asleep. Uh, sure. I, I did. I, hey, I did my mission. It was what I needed to do. We stay winning. Uh -huh. We stay on top. Sweet boy. Uh -huh. What did you get yourself into? Shit. Why do you want to freeze the whole town? What's the point? Rest now. 
and let me handle everything. The end. Chapter 9. Oh no, for real? A speech to end all speeches. Luca awoke to find himself face down in bed. He moaned into his pillow. Why would Gran drug him? Well, Gran didn't really drug him. He kind of drugged himself. Or rather, why was she trying to drug Mr. Nuncreed? That's, that's better. Shaking the questions from his woozy head, Luca snapped back to the matter at hand. The festival! I'm excited. What if this is the final? This might be like the, the final storyline. We're making some progress. We got to chapter 9. You're supposed to be 11. Oh, hello. Where have you been? I, uh, Gran put something in the jam. Yeah, we know. Secret messages for secret conspirators. Not this one. The one intended for Mr. Nuncreed put me to sleep. Whoa, ho, ho. sly devil. Sly? Ooh, new, new word? I think, I think she's trying to remove him from the equation. He might be in danger. Have you found anything? You looked around, but haven't seen anything odd. Your grand has nowhere to be found. Is nowhere to be found. But Nun Creed is just loafing around, waiting for the speech. What speech? May Gr Gus just go up to the podium? Everyone's gathering at the stage. Let's get moving. I'm struggling to read all these in all the different accents. That's why it's coming off so robotic. I'm struggling so hard right now. They switch between so many different characters, and I'm just like, Ugh. I'm trying though. I'm trying. <clears throat> Is this thing? Uh, hello, Beacon Pines. <laughs> Thanks, Willy Nilly Lily. Appreciate it. I'm Augustus Valentine, your mayor, and I suppose you already know that. Um, oh yes, before we get started, I just wanted to take a moment to recognize someone who couldn't be here today. This town wouldn't be where it is today without my father, Sharper Valentine, or uh, Luca's mother, who disappeared, uh, and it was, you know, less than six years ago. So, why do you care more about your fucking dad than my mother, you piece of shit? Anyway, so I thought we could begin with a round of applause befitting such a great man. Even that's more than the old Kaji deserves. Gus cleared his throat and awkwardly loosened his tie. Right, where was William I? William Kerr bounded on the stage with the energy of a preacher at a big tent revival. Uh, now I gotta have the energy? Come on, guys. Come on. Uh, here we go. Gus Valentine, he everyone! Gave Gus a hearty slap on the back and motioned him off the stage. Let's hear it for our mayor. What a great turnout. Oh, heck. I didn't prepare anything, but I suppose I could say a few words. Would be a shame to waste such a beautiful podium. Mr. Kerr pulled a thick stack of note cards out from his vest. Didn't think of anything, huh? Community conviction commitment. These are the things we celebrate at perennial harvest. For us, these are the pillars of the bridge to a better tomorrow. But I think it's time to add a new pillar. Change. Change is a powerful thing. It's inexorable, unavoidable, and undeniable. And I am dadgum thankful for it. Change is the reason we're all here together today. It's hard for me to believe that it was only four years ago when fate brought me here. A simple business trip which brought me to a small town would change my life forever. Mr. Kerr took a moment to survey the crowd. You know what? He wiped away a single tear. From the second I set foot in Beacon Pines, something about this place has held me captive. You see, change represents opportunity. It represents potential. It was change that helped me re re recognize the potential of this place. To see that the people of this town, despite suffering great loss, still held on to the things that made them special. He thumped the podium to emphasize each word. Community, conviction, commitment. Change. Mr. Kerr nodded confidently, biting his lip. The crowd was silent, in rapt attention. Fate made a perfect match that day. Nothing is more important to you all than community. 
And Perennial Harvest is a community first and foremost. Mr. Kerr methodically made eye contact with each section of the crowd. This is like when you start a new job and you're like, we're a family. And then they fuck you over because they're fucking pieces of shit managers. Anyway. The only way you made it through the foul, foul harvest was an unshakable conviction. A conviction that a better tomorrow was just over the horizon. Perennial Harvest was founded on the conviction that we are that horizon. This festival is a symbol of our commitment to each other. Bro, he is yapping. To a he is yapping like crazy. We can now walk hand in hand into a future we will shape together. And that is what change is all about. Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice. I am tickled pink that we will all be making that choice together. How great is that? Just imagine that what we can accomplish. And then we're about to get frozen. What was that? The crowd began to look around nervously. Don't worry, a little thunder isn't going to ruin this day. Everyone remain Mr. calm. Kerr quickly flicked through his note cards. Where was I? Uh, through all my travels, I've learned one true thing. One always reaps what they sow. We have all planted a lot of good in this town. And so, it is with a happy heart that I can proclaim... He raised his hands up to the heavens. Our harvest awaits. We just got frozen again, baby. Hey, remember what I was saying about how this might be the one where we end it? Like, we get to the end? Yeah, that's not, moment, that's not it. A merciless wall of impossibly cold air ripped through the crowd, instantly freezing everyone and everything it touched. For a man like William Kerr, this was a fitting way for things to end. On a stage, with an entire town frozen in rapt attention for the rest of time. The end. There's that ice again! Whenever I think we're getting close, it comes along and ruins everything! That's what I'm saying! Maybe we should just quit? Maybe you should just close the book, walk away, and never think of me again! Is this a story about writer's block, too? No, I... I don't mean that. We got a little closer this time. We just need to try again. Yo, this could be kind of like a story about writer's block, like not knowing exactly where to go with the story. Please. You know? That's kind of cool. That's kind of funky. Guys, it's 11.47. I feel like it's time to end here. Um, We can be sly. There's another interrogation. Oh, that's we do that tomorrow, 100%. And then we'll start on this right right pathway again. Um, But yeah, I feel like that was a pretty good point to end it. We got frozen twice. Um, We got a new interrogation tactic, which might be the way. Because it feels like a... I knew we would get a third one because we had um, Luca do something and we had Rolo do something. Now we're going to have Beck do something. I feel like that's going to be the one. Might take us to the end. Don't know. I feel like we're getting pretty close. Um, and then if if we end on that tomorrow, then we'll go through and do some of the right pathways as well. But um, man, we're at six out of ten achievements. We did three each day. So we might do this for two more streams. Who knows? Um, but today was also a short stream and we're not going to mention why. It was because I got a little late on some homework. Um, anyway, <laughs> boys, thank you so much for watching YouTube. I'm gonna head out. Uh, obviously, watch the other VODs. I'm gonna be streaming every day, so I'm gonna be posting every day. Uh, join the Discord if you want. Talk to people. All that good stuff. Leave a like. Goodbye. Take care. Bye, YouTube.